Okay, so in the last video we looked at the problem of the pendulum on a spring and we found out that it was more convenient to express the motion of the pendulum instead in terms of polar coordinates instead of x and y, so basic Cartesian coordinates. And we performed the transformation as follows. We had x equals to r sine theta, y equals to r cosine theta. Now, assuming that the radius is a function of time, so it varies with time, what we can do is we can differentiate things. So basically, we're going to have a case where you're just going to apply the product rule of differentiation. And we should be able to get to this expression here. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to assume a very general case in which the radius changes with time. So first of all, what we're going to derive is these two equations here. So the velocities in each of those directions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to square each of them, so this quantity squared is going to become all this, and then this one squared is going to become all this. And now the sum of the velocities in each direction is going to give us this expression. Now the reason this is so important is because this allows us to write the kinetic energy in this form, and the reason why this expression is so useful is because it is a standard result, basically this is the kinetic energy in polar coordinates, so for a system that is moving in two dimensions and we want to express its motion in polar coordinates, this is what the kinetic energy term looks like. So we could have saved a lot of time and effort if we, could, if we just had started with this, but I wanted to show you the full process, what you would do in case you didn't know this formula here, well you, you could derive it, of, of course it's going to take a very long time doing all the cancellation and basically expanding every term, making sure you don't make any mistakes, but in the end you're going to get there, so uh, I guess the main point of this is just try and point out that this formula is pretty standard, so when we work with polar coordinates we can usually just write the kinetic energy in terms of this whole term here. Now, how does that test for the case of the pendulum that had a spring attached to it? So we have a, a spring, and then we have some mass hanging on it, and this is basically swinging back and forth, and then we have some stiffness k, but we know that the total length is changing now, so we have some initial unstretched length for the spring that was L, so this is a constant, plus some radial displacement, so some displacement along that length, which we called r. So if we were to essentially use this formula here, what we would do is we would write, well let's say we write the kinetic energy in terms of polar coordinates, then in here what we need to write is, this is the radius that we're working with, so how about we write it as follows, we're gonna have l plus r and this whole thing is going to be the the velocity, so basically this is the radius, it's just a constant time uh, plus this uh, ra radial displacement, so that's the first term in the equation, just the radial velocity squared, and then the second term is going to be the, radius the radial displacement squared times the angular velocity squared. So we're going to have this, then L plus R, squared times angular velocity squared. Now what does this become? Well if you think about it, this expression right here is essentially the same as d over dt of L plus r. Now we know that L is a constant so this is just going to become zero and then in the end you're just going to have r dot which means that your total expression is going to become this one, um, then you have r dot squared plus l plus r squared theta dot squared, and if you recall what we obtained in the last video for the kinetic energy term was exactly this, but we obtained it in expanded form, so basically if we expand this out we should get the original expression, so we're going to have half of m and then we have r dot squared plus l squared theta dot squared plus 2lr theta dot squared and then plus 
r squared theta dot squared. So this is the original expression that we derived using the the non-straightforward approach, with, which was deriving every single thing from first principles. But this is essentially the same. And you notice that we e easily derived it just by using making use of this formula. So now that I have told you what this is, you can pretty much say, okay, so if I have some kind of body or object and its motion is confined in the two-dimensional plane, and I know that uh, it is more convenient to use polar coordinates for that purpose, then this is pretty much what the kinetic energy in terms of polar coordinates is. So that should simplify things in case you're working with something complicated like this one here.